first 30 seconds of your presentation, how you come out and build rapport is important, as in your last 30 seconds. You always have to focus on, remember, even though your presentations in many cases are similar, what are the challenges, problems, or opportunities for this person that you're talking to? And you introduce your premise. Now, as you heard, the premise for this presentation, every conversation and presentation has a premise, a big idea, a central theme. Every TV show, every movie, every book, every article has a premise, which is the big idea. Your premise will be unstated. And very simply, every sales conversation and presentation has the same premise. And that is, your company will be better off when they do business with our company. Now, the body of the presentation, all the talking points, prove that premise. So, as you are looking through what you are planning to say, you ask yourself the question, why would they care? What is the benefit to them? And many of my clients, when I first meet them and I say, can you just give me a sample sales presentation? Good morning. Thank you for your time. Never thank people for their time. Make a note of that. Never thank people for their time. I maintain you're probably just as busy as your prospects. But the reason is not that. The reason is everybody says thank you for their time. If you sound the same as everybody else, how do you stand out and be memorable and distinctive? Hi, good morning. Thank you for your time. I'm Joe Blow, and I work with the ABC company. And we've been in business for 36 years, and we have this unique methodology, and this is who we serve, and we'd love to do business with you. Nobody cares. Because everyone is more interested in themselves, and the secret of being powerfully persuasive is that your subject has to be of interest to them. And in a sales conversation and presentation, if it's not focused on them, they're not going to be quite as interested. So you're going to put together your talking points based on... What is their problem, opportunity, or challenge? Whatever they would call it, and the solution. And as you put your, I would say, your chunks of content together, you have their problem. Perhaps you would give your explanation of how you would help them with that. You might then give an example of how you've helped somebody else in this situation and what would be logical, the application for them. Now, while you are telling your story, you can use different phrasing, like, based on our 15 years experience, or ever since our founder in 1912 said, so you're giving them your story, but as it's tied into their challenges, opportunities, and problems. Now, a seamless transition is as simple as, a pause. Oh. And the second area you were interested in hearing about is, and again, you look at it. Now, perhaps some of the content you use, some of your chunks, would be the past, present, and the future. So, especially this could be if you're revisiting a prospect who, in fact, has already done business with you. You might say, in 2012, you made a very wise decision to invest in this. And this has served you very well. However, now that you have expanded in this area, the logical next step is to expand here because we've got new technology. This will serve you better. And it would be very easy because as you're looking towards expanding, Internationally, this is what we would recommend. 
So these are just suggestions of how you put your talking points together. Might be explaining your point of view, give an example, application of them, or revisit what the decision they made in the past. Could be where we are now in the new technology and how we could help you reach your future goals. It could be as simple as if you are being compared to a vendor that is now up for renewal. You might say, in the past, you, you, were, you invested in this company or this consultant or this realtor or you had drove this model of car and you're very happy. However, as you are looking for a new, fresh, modern or innovative, what would you say about you that perhaps without knocking the last vendor or consultant might position you differently? Because I don't know about your world, but I know sometimes in mine you're being compared to the last vendor to justify saying, no, you don't need to charge us more money because this, these three people will do it for less. So you want to prove, especially if you might be more than them, what is new, fresh, innovative, or different about you. And then how, based on where they want to go in the future, they need your unique approach, your, your difference than the last vendor or consultant didn't have. But again, you don't knock your competition. You just position yourself differently from them. And then perhaps you're going to put your, your presentation together. Again, depending on what you are selling, is that the local approach, this is how we would handle your social media, or your advertising, or your campaign, or for your executives who are living here, this is how we would handle them locally. Now, what would you advise nationally? Or now that you are expanding internationally, this is our approach. So look at putting together your chunks of content, your talking points, and remember, however you put them together, remember, it is to prove the premise that they will be better off doing business with you than anybody else they might talk to. You want to do your review, handle your question and answers, and remember what are the next steps you recommend. And here is a phrase I want you to write down. You'll see it in your handout, but I want you to write it down. Your last words linger. So once you conclude your presentation, I want you to have one more line. This is your last words linger that will be burned into their mind. One of my friends is a genius copywriter. And David Garfinkel, and he says most copywriters, if they're writing a sales letter, will write the PS first. Now, the PS is never a new idea. It reinforces the key reason for, for the sales letter, the new product, or the innovative upgrades, whatever it is. Your PS, it's almost as if you concluded your presentation on a high, nice, satisfying conclusion, and as you were walking out, it's almost you turn around and say, and remember, 157 profitable quarters, or remember, 99% of the Fortune 100 do business with us, or remember, we are large enough to serve every need you have and small enough that you will always be one of our v VIP clients. Or remember, you will have the president of the company's cell phone 24-7. You can use it. What is the one idea that they will not forget? So it's tying your presentation up in a bow and then... Mm, 
just one more impact. So I challenge you to think, as you are revisiting your sales presentation, look at what you are now saying and start again. And you might want to put loud, clear, on a clean pad or a clean yellow pad or a clean part of the whiteboard, what are the challenges, opportunities, frustrations, problems, and then put together all the other content you have as it focuses on solving that problem, improving while you are the best.